Hello Internet! Today we have this fancy Zotac that came with a bent I.O. and a dent on the PCB. It looks like we're off to a great start. Good thing it has a back cover, so hopefully there's no damage underneath. Once card is undressed, I will perform a visual inspection and not finding anything criminal, I will continue with the measurements as follows. Several kilo ohms on 12 volt, 3.3 with 10k. My guess is this is a 5 volt rail with roughly 4k. This here looks like a 1.8 with 850 ohms. PEX with 60 memory 66 and no short on the remaining 12 volt rails first data pair looks the same first data pair on the back measured after the capacitors also looks the same clock reference uh, plus and minus and uh, looks like the pex rst has some kind of a reading okay with these measurements out of the way, it is safe to power the board and see what it does. 5 volt is there, 1.8 volt is there, core present, PEX is present, and memory present. The interesting thing I noted is that this card draws almost 2.5 amps doing nothing. I guess that's what the AMP edition stands for. I don't know. Card is detected, driver picked it up, and everything seemed to be pretty good until this happened. While the card is in the crash state, I went and I checked every phase to see if any of them are cut off for any reason. And according to my Chinese oscilloscope, everything is working as it should, at least in the power delivery area. So the next obvious test to run would be a memory test to see if it runs and if it passes. Memory test revealed some errors on A0 and no wonder. A0 is not installed from the factory. So what else is there? You guessed it right, reball. So let's reball.
Reball is complete, and now the card is completely dead. 5 volt is still on there, but the 1.8 volt is now gone. And therefore everything that follows, including pecs, core, memory, is all silent. Let's look at the data sheet for this 1.8 volt converter, where we can identify the pinout and see which one is the enable pin. It looks like we have enable signal, so the next pin to check would be the boot. And since the chip itself is not generating anything on boot, it means the chip is dead and it will not output anything on the power good as a result. Which means I need to replace this chip. But with what? I don't have an identical part in stock. I do however have this uh, chip with a slightly different part number and even the pinout looks the same. And as far as the rating goes, this chip I have is rated with higher amps and with lower internal resistances, which is even better than the original. So let's put this chip on and see if it works. Quick check for resistances one more time. Looks like we don't have any shorts, so let's power it on. And we got two and a half amps again. My guess at this point is that we have a fix and there's only one way to find out, is to boot into the windows and see if it works. Okay, that looks like a working card. So next thing I want to do is to assemble it and run more stress tests as usual. Once the card was assembled, I noticed two things. First, the middle fan has a broken fin. And second, this. This may be a memory related problem, so let's run the memory test real quick and see what's going on. Test refuses to run, and it glitches every step of the way as you can see. So clearly, we have an issue far beyond any repair that anyone can do at this point. Goodbye. But wait, there's this guy who likes to tinker with GPUs until there's no hope left. And it seems like there is none, because it's not even detecting anymore. Oh I don't know what's wrong at this point, but I'm guessing due to the size of the PCB, my standard temperatures may not have been enough, so I decided to reflow the core. And while the board is still hot, I also removed the BIOS chip and reflashed it just in case. Sometimes it can cause issues like that too, so might as well do that to save some time. After that, it says the test has passed, but the NVMT is complaining about the B1. And according to Windows, we do indeed have a memory problem, so let's go ahead and replace B0 and see if it helps. Done. Memory test now passes, so let's go into Windows for confirmation. 
And it looks like we don't have any errors in the device manager and I can run the valley, so I guess we're good. At this point, car was already assembled, but that fan in the middle is still bothering me, so I decided to balance it out by breaking some of the fins on the opposite sides. This isn't a fix, this is just a temporary solution until the owner will order and replace the fans themselves. But it's enough for me to run the stress test without it vibrating itself to death. This is it for this card. If you need a repair, please contact me by following the link in the description. And if you learned anything out of this one, please give me a like, a comment, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you won't miss my next clip. Goodbye.